Kia ora koto and welcome to Wayfarers of the South Tigris solo mode in about three minutes. Note this video only focuses on the solo mode and its differences from the main game. To find out more about the main game, watch our main video. The solo game ends once either you or the AI player gets to the end of the main board track. You get one more turn and so does the AI. You win if you score more points than the AI. Player turn. Here I will look at how the AI behaves and what it does on its turn. First grab one of the player boards and flip it over. This is the AI board. There are four of them and they differ slightly mostly what their unique action is shown here. Place unused markers on these two spots. The bottom left one is for tracking comets, which is used to check if you win any victory points on comet cards. Other one is the AI targeting track. Let's zoom in on that. Wherever the marker is determines targeting priority for certain actions. If it is in the black spaces, it will target space. Blue for sea, yellow for land, and it's sitting on green here. The other information here is how the AI scores points, and that's based on how many cards of each type it collects throughout the game. And this area is which card or upgrade the AI will take when given the option. Let's look at how it all fits together. Shuffle the six AI cards and draw one. It has several bits of information. First the number at the top. This determines how far you move the targeting marker clockwise on the AI board. You then take one of the two actions on here. First action is to place a green worker. The AI does not have one so it skips to the second action. That action is the AI special action and in this case it's to claim a townsperson card. The number at the top of this card is two. So we check the targeting board for value two for townspeople cards. This says we grab the third card from the townspeople stack on the main board and add it to the AI's victory pile. The next card drawn has a zero on top, so do not advance the targeting marker. They still don't have any workers, so place one influence in each of the guilds. The next card has a one, so advance the marker one. Now the AI does have two influence in the blue guild, so spends them to take a blue card. When targeting a card, you use the sum of the last two cards played. So we check the blue card targeting for one, and it is the leftmost card, and we add that to their victory pile. The next card moves the marker as normal, and they don't have the two black influence, so gain one and a townsfolk. And because the targeting marker passed this point, they gain another one. And they still don't have a worker, so gain an upgrade tile using the same targeting rules as you would for cards, but picking the color based on where the targeting marker is. This tile is placed onto the bottom of their board, and they will collect the bonuses shown. Once three cards of any color have been played, the AI will next take a rest action shown at the bottom of its board. If the last card played has a combat icon, advance that track by one. Then claim their special bonus and then move them on the main board. They will go up if most of the cards were blue and down if they were red. If they have influence in the black guild, they can move more than one space, spending more influence if they are ahead of the player as shown here. They also claim any workers and bonuses. A few notes to finish off. The AI starts with two workers and gets workers back whenever it claims a card with a worker on it. The AI gets none of the instant effect bonuses from cards it obtains. If the AI would take an action that gives them dice manipulation or resources, check this reference to see what they get instead. If they get an inspiration card, check here to see which one they claim. And for purple upgrades, see the bottom of the last card you played. Why would you like this game? This is a solo mode for the solo fans out there who love playing games against an AI opponent who will routinely kick your butt. The AI is busy at times, but aggressive, so you'll have to play an up-tempo game to have any chance of beating it. And the AI just keeps pushing forward, scoring points and putting the pressure on you. All up, a solo game for people who like heavier games and mean AI opponents. The best thing about the solo mode is the six card AI deck. It's a brilliant bit of solo game design. However, the AI turns can take a little while, especially when it rests and it moves two spaces and gets lots of upgrades. Remembering to do everything in the right order can be challenging. Wayfarer's solo mode. The AI got how many points? A reminder, three minute board games does not do paid content. Keep us independent by supporting us on Patreon. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the notification button, like, share, and subscribe to the channel.